Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe After Effects CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an animated, hand-drawn scribble effect that you might often see in popular music videos. So I'm actually starting in Adobe Premiere Pro just to show you guys an example workflow that I think you might actually be in. One, you'd have your project or music video all edited out, and then you might want to add some special effects to just one or two clips. At that point, you would just right-click those clips and then replace them with After Effects composition. Now, if you were just in After Effects and you didn't want to do your project in Premiere, then simply open up After Effects and begin the tutorial with your clip in After Effects, and then you could export it out to something like Final Cut or Sony Vegas if you prefer that workflow. But I'm using this Creative Cloud workflow, so when you open up After Effects, it's going to ask you to save this clip as a project. So whatever way helps you be organized, I'll save this as scribble example on my desktop, but if you're creating a project, just have it all in the same folder probably. Now this is going to open that one clip in Adobe After Effects for us to begin adding some special effects onto. So you want to make sure you have a few windows open. So I'm going to go to Window and make sure the Brushes window is open, and then you can also go to Window and make sure the Paint window is open. So that's going to look like these two panels right here, Brush and Paint. Now in order to be able to select different brushes and paint colors, you want to head over to the top left menu here and select your brush tool. So with the brush tool active, there's a few different options we can set. Now you can just go with your basic white foreground color if you want to play around, but I'm going to show you a cool example with multiple colors in this tutorial. So first I'm going to choose a bright blue, and then I'm actually going to set the blending mode of this layer to color dodge. And what that's going to do is give us a brighter mixed in effect. Next, you want to select a brush size. If you want to go for that hand-drawn scribble effect, you could play around with simple circular brushes, large or small, to doodle and scribble on your image. I'll stick with this 19 pixel brush with a 100% roundness, 100% hardness, very basic. You could play around with it if you want and create spaced out or stroked brushes or put it on an angle and adjust different things like that. Now, I'm using a Wacom tablet, which means that I'm going to be able to draw on my clip with pen pressure. If you don't have a drawing pen tablet, that's okay. You can just use your mouse. Now, in order to begin painting, you want to make sure you go to your layer and double click on it. And that's going to open your file into its own layer menu. And then make sure you have the brush highlighted and you should be able to start painting on your image. So a few key things to speed up this process is because we're going to be going frame by frame is the shortcuts on your keyboard. For Mac, it's going to be command and the right arrow. If you're on Windows, just use Alt and arrow keys. This is going to move you forward one frame or left one frame. So I'm going to move over to the very first frame that I want to begin painting on, and there's one more setting that we need to make sure we pay attention to. So the duration here is the duration of your paint strokes. So I'll break it down for you really quickly how each of these durations works and which ones you're going to want to probably stick with. So constant means that whatever I paint on this frame is going to stay on there constantly. So from this frame on, that's always going to be there. Now right on is one that will animate your frame based on the way you move your mouse. So if I quickly do a little circle, you'll see that it's going to take how fast I moved my mouse and it's going to play that circle out. That's often a bit too slow and it bases it on how quickly you do your line and how long your mouse was held down. That one we're probably going to skip for this effect. Now single frame, single frame is the one that you're probably going to want to use for the duration of this effect. This means that whatever I paint on this frame, as soon as I go to the next frame, it's gone. And that allows me to have a blank canvas on each frame. Custom is one that you might want to use in certain cases. You can set a specific time frame for the, the thing to stay on there for. So if I only want it to stay on there for 10 frames, I can enter in 10. And let's say I want this smiley face in the corner to be there for 10 frames. Now when I go 10 frames over, it's gone. So you can use all of these in combination or specific ways, but if you're just doing your first effect, the one that you're going to basically want to stick on is single frame, and you can maybe incorporate a few of those others for some more advanced and side effects. But remember, the same way that you have a brush tool, you also have an eraser tool. Additionally, if you click the drop down menu on the track, you open up the effects, you can see all the different paint strokes you've made and the blending options are on and all that. And in this case, I'm just going to delete all of them. So that's an explanation of all the tools and all the settings. Now I'm going to actually create my effect. 
So I'll click my brush tool, I'll find my starting point that I want to start my little flashy effects on, and then you want to keep your hands hovered over the command and the arrow keys, because this is how we can move forward and backward frame by frame. That's our shortcut. If you're on Mac, it's command, right arrow key. If you're on Windows, it should be alt, right and left arrow key. So I'm going to keep my hands on those and I'll keep my brush settings how I want. And I'll use a single frame duration for my brush. And then on the first frame, I'll make my first line. Now I'll move one over. I'll remember where I made my last frame and then I'll maybe play something off of it or just do random effects. So I can have multiple lines kind of making animations if I keep that in mind. And I can just work through frame by frame to create a final effect. Now this is going to take patience. You're going to have to hand draw and scribble on each frame. And remember, each there's like 30 frames in one second. So you might have to make 30 different drawings or 24 different drawings just to get one second worth of effect. So I'm just going to continue drawing and doodling on each of these frames and I'll catch up with you guys once I have a couple seconds worth of effect. So once you've scribbled on enough individual frames, you can take your playhead back and press space to play your clip and see what the effect looks like. And that's just for one color. Now the cool part is you can go back over the whole thing, except this time I'll switch to like a red or a white color. I can change to a normal blending mode if I want, but I'm going to keep it on color dodge in this case. Make sure you're still on red, green, blue, alpha color mode. And then I can go through and do the same process, except this time create some different accents with red and create like an alternate line that's moving around and create kind of a layered and textured animation effect. So I'm going to go through and do this whole thing again and then I'll show you guys what the final result looks like for my example. Just to give you guys an example, let me show you how we would do a little bit more of an advanced effect if we were using the constant instead of single frame. Let's say I wanted to create a cool little animated border and I didn't want to have to keep building on it. So I'd go to the next frame with all these constants and I'd draw out my cool little border or line. So you see, I don't have to pick up where I left off and create 20 different lines every single frame. Now when I wanted to erase all of these constant lines and kind of call my effect finish, I could go to the eraser tool, make sure it's on constant erase duration, increase the brush size a lot, and then on the next frame just erase everything. So let's play that back and see what my effect looks like with the red and blue layers. Now at this point, you could just close the project and save it and you should see it update in your Premiere Pro project as a pink After Effects composition file and it'll reflect all of your animated clips and changes. So that's how you would work it in to your Premiere Pro projects because likely you'd be editing and sequencing the entire thing here and just using After Effects to create a little bit of special effects on a couple seconds of clips or a few different clips. Now if you weren't using Premiere Pro, then in After Effects you would just export your clip and then take it into whatever uh, editing software that you were using for your workflow. So that's how to create that animated music video scribble effect. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like on it. And if this is your first time on my channel, then make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for daily new creative videos. I have playlists on my channel full of photo and video editing tutorials like Adobe Premiere and Photoshop. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you can follow me at Show to stay tuned for more on there. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.